welcome to rao online uh, today's topic is preterm labor why this is a concern is because prematurity accounts for 70 percent of fetal and neonatal deaths of fetuses born without congenital malformations so of the babies who are born normal without malformations the number one cause of death is prematurity or preterm labor so how do we define the preterm labor these babies are a problem because they need long duration of neonatal ICU care and there is a lot of costs involved in this care of newborn babies which covers the cost of surfactants for lung maturity, IV fluids, parental nutrition and there are days of care. Preterm labor is a presence of regular contractions of sufficient strength and frequency to affect progressive effacement and dilatation of cervix between 27 and 37, 20 and 37 weeks of gestation as given by WHO. The incidence of preterm labor is 6 to 10 percent of all pregnancies and preterm labor is a syndrome characterized by the premature activation of the pathway of parturition or labor. So to define preterm labor there must be sufficient intensity, regular contractions and there must be a progressive cervical dilatation and effacement in a person who is not yet 37 weeks. What is threatened preterm labor? Threatened preterm labor is when there are uterine contractions which occur once in 3 to 5 minutes but no associated progressive dilatation and effacement of cervix. So in threatened preterm there are uterine contractions but no cervical dilatation. ACOG or the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecologists says there must be three criteria to document preterm labor. One is four contractions in 20 minutes or eight contractions in 60 minutes and progressive changes in the cervix observed over a period of two hours. If there is a cervical effacement of 80 percent or more and cervical dilatation of more than one centimeter. So there must be at least four contractions in 20 minutes or at least eight contractions in 60 minutes associated with the progressive changes in the cervix when observed over a period of two hours associated with cervical effacement of more than 80 percent and cervical dilatation of more than one centimeter. What is the incidence of preterm labor? It is 6 to 10 percent of all pregnancies. Preterm labor can be late preterm when it is 34 to 37 weeks or it can be early preterm when it is less than 34 weeks. Now late preterm the baby mor mortality is less because baby is relatively more mature and fortunately uh, late preterm is more common than early preterm. Late preterm the incidence is 7 to 11 percent and early preterm the incidence is 3 to 7 percent. So early preterm is more dangerous, it is less common whereas late preterm is less dangerous and it is more common. So etiology, spontaneous preterm is seen in 72 percent of cases and induced preterm. So sometimes we induce labor prematurely especially if the continuation of pregnancy is not compatible with maternal interest like gestational diabetes, hypertensive disorder in pregnancy, renal disease in pregnancy. So all these patients we have to induce the labor prematurely. What are the clinical risk factors for prematurity or preterm labor? Prior preterm birth, which is the most commonest, over distended uterus in multiple pregnancies and polyhydromnios, age less than 16 or more than 35, BMI less than 19, vaginal bleeding in second or third trimesters. So, antepartum hemorrhage has more chance for preterm labor, infections in pregnancy, anemia in pregnancy, heart disease in pregnancy, smoking in pregnancy gestational hypertension in pregnancy and low socioeconomic status is also associated with preterm labor. Induced preterm labor is done in 28 percent of cases and most common causes for inducing preterm labor by doctors is preeclampsia or increased blood pressure in pregnancy, abruptio placenta or the accidental separation of a normally situated placenta, fetal distress or fetal growth restriction. These are the fetal indications for inducing preterm labor and preeclampsia and abruptio placenta are the maternal indications for inducing preterm labor. Infections is a risk factor for preterm labor and most commonly we can see infections due to chlamydia, trichomonas, E. coli, group B streptococci, 
periodontitis or dental infections carries a fourfold risk of preterm labor, bacterial vaginosis, asymptomatic bacteriuria and systemic febrile illnesses all carry an increased risk for preterm labor. And all the pathogenetic mechanism is because of the inflammation of the fetal membranes which are chorion and amnion. So there are four pathways why preterm labor can develop. One is inflammatory pathways as happen in the chorioamniotis. Another one is the activation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Another pathway is decidual hemorrhages or bleeding in the intervillous sinuses or placental separation and another causes the uterine over distension.